Okay, so in this video, I'm introducing you to Microsoft Forms. I know that we've used Google Forms for our online assessments as a tool to use, but if you're a math teacher, you want to start using Microsoft Forms. The reason for that, Microsoft is going to make it very easy for us to put in math, but also its AI, its artificial intelligence engine, is going to do suggestions for us to help uh, make this process go quicker. So I'm going to start by double clicking on new quiz and just to do a simple run through here so you can see the power that comes with using Microsoft uh, Forms for math teachers. So I'm just going to call it math quiz. I'm going to add a new question. I'm going to let it be a multiple choice question. Uh, actually, when it says choice, you have uh, the option to change it from multiple choice to a drop down choice. So I can also put on my shuffle option. I'm going to take away the drop down choice and leave it as a multiple choice. We see that these buttons also there's the option for math. That's going to let me type math equations right into here. I don't need to do screenshots. I don't need any special tools. Uh, this was a, a great find to see that math tool built into forms. I'm going to say solve as my question and I'm going to type an equation down here and I'm just typing one I'm hitting the slash symbol look how it went right to a fraction bar two I'm gonna hit the right arrow to get out of the fraction X plus one equals three I type my equation I'm going to hit enter and watch what Microsoft does it suggested it gave us a bunch of suggestions for answers I can hit add all and I have all of these answers here and the correct answers at top I'm just going to drag that and put it someplace else in there even though I have the shuffle option on by default Microsoft puts the correct answer at top it'll shuffle for each uh, person who logs into the quiz but it just gives me peace of mind that the top answer isn't always the correct answer all right now that I've done that watch when I hit add new Microsoft says we have some ideas for other questions for you did you want to add them I'm going to hit add all just to see what we get from it here they've given us a question with three answers we can now come into this question and say well let's add another option so I put X equals positive 2 we see that the correct answer wasn't at the top this time so it was good to see that Microsoft doesn't always make it the top answer um, with my experience I've been getting a lot of the suggested answers having the correct one at top so I would like to make sure it's in a different location and it's as easy as just dragging it and placing it somewhere else but we see that this was a completely generated question here's another one completely generated with four answers here's another one completely generated with two answers um, and if you don't like the question we just come here and click on it and hit the trash can and say I don't want this question it doesn't really apply well, those were multiple choice. Let's look at a text option where I want a student to type a mathematical answer. So I'm going to say factor and X. I'm using the caret symbol shift six and it goes into the superscript squared. I'm using the right arrow key to get out of the exponent minus two and I'm going to hit enter. I want students to factor this. Let's see what it looks like on the student end. I'm going to come up here to preview. And to type this answer in, look how the math bar comes up. Your students can type mathematically. So I'm going to do parentheses, x plus 2, and then um, close the parentheses, and then open the parentheses, x minus 2, and hit enter. And great, the student answer is there. Now I'm going to go back. I didn't add any correct answers here, so I need to do that. X minus 2. X plus 2. I hit OK. Now, I do have to add another answer with the reverse order, X plus 2 and X minus 2. So Microsoft is smart, but not that smart. They still have to, we, we still have to type in the uh, switched answer order so that it'll be marked correctly. Now students can type their answers mathematically. Um, find the sum of terms. 3x 
x squared minus 5x plus 7x minus 4x squared. And your students will be able to type in their answers, type their answers in using mathematics. Again, if I go back to the preview, we see that when the student comes to this question and they click on it, a math palette comes up. Microsoft's able to grade it. We don't need any add-ons into this to make it work. I know that we've struggled in the past with add-ons like Equatio and whatnot. Here, it's all part of it. I think Microsoft's done a great job. Um, just to go back. Once you're finished with your quiz, this is a very familiar layout. If you've been using Google Forms, you have a questions tab and you have a responses tab. All of that works out the same. And I'm just coming over here to show you that if you click the send button, that gives you the options to send a link. See how a hyperlink is selected here. Um, I can generate a QR code, I can generate an embed code, all of this is similar, or I can send it in an email. Um, down here it says get a duplicate link, so if I want to share this with a colleague, it'll give me a link so that they can make their my quiz a copy of it in their own Microsoft OneDrive and edit it for their own use. So this is making it easy to share things, and then we have our themes to customize it. Uh, Microsoft has a bunch of nice themes here that we can put into our quiz. If I go back to preview, and zoom out a little bit, you can see, you know, we have nice themes to apply to it. If we wanted to customize the theme, we can do that as well. You'll notice at the bottom here, I have a customized upload image. I can search the web. I can say, find an algebra image. There we go, a nice green blackboard. There's my image, waiting for it to come in. And preview. So we see that we have a nice looking quiz. We can put custom backgrounds. Uh, the format is very much the same as if you've used Google Forms. Uh, and Microsoft is known for copying other designs and then making their own improvements to it. I think this is pretty much a copy of Google Forms. It's just great with the math capabilities it has built in. And just to go back to editing our questions, um, just like we would do with uh, our online assessments with Google, I can add sections if I want to separate questions and have one question on screen at a time, I would do that by sections. Or if I wanted to group a bunch of questions with an image. So let's bring an image up here. There we go. So I'm going to put a rectangle image in. say answer the following questions using this image and now these questions will all be in section two write the perimeter as an algebraic expression And again, we want to remember to say that this is a math question so that students will have the ability to type in a math answer. I don't need to put in anything mathematical here because my image has it. Okay, so again, write the perimeter as an algebraic expression. Um, when we're in this question, we can add our answers here so that it can be uh, graded for us automatically. So if we add up all of the terms of the sides of the rectangle, we should get 2x squared. I'm going to hit the right arrow on my keyboard to get out of the exponent. So it's 2x squared plus 4x. 
and then minus four. Enter. So students can answer mathematically, typing out algebraic equations. Again, Microsoft has embedded the math palette to do that. Uh, I'm excited about it because this makes math assessments online more attainable. Uh, we have more, more of an option to have students type the math than have to generate everything as multiple choice. I hope you find this tool useful. I know that I will. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know.